Is that a first? Is that a world first as well? Maybe it is. I don't know. It could be a world first. I couldn't find any references to it, so maybe I'm the first to do this as well. So I've been asked to look at these two CB radios to do conversions on them. We've got the PC78 LTX, and also in this box is a Cobra 29 Limited. DZ conversions is in channels. I don't know which version these are, whether these are going to be copycated or not. Also, we give it this microphone to fix, which is completely broken there. Okay, that'll be interesting. The end looks kind of alright. We'll start the radios. Even if I can do the normal conversion I do on these things, I won't be showing you the alignment process because that's done in another room. I'll do that in my other lab, I suppose you'd call it. I'm doing proper alignments out there. So I'll do some basic stuff in here, some basic checks, but that's about it. Only panel doesn't have circuit diagrams in it. CB radio series rules. Hmm. Read that, of course. Yes. There's the radio. Let me get my mat down the protector. Now, my first impression about this radio is that it seems like it's slightly shorter. I think it should be about this long, which makes me think straight away it's a new version. Ready for it now? Let's open it up and have a look. That's the first step. The screws are already not very tight. Yeah, all a bit loose. These ones loose? Yeah, those are loose as well. These screws are kind of grey. I don't know. What, what colour would you call that? They're not black. I don't know, it's not black, it's not... I don't know what... It's a weird colour. And they're all a bit loose. So either someone's been in here before, which I think is likely. <laughs> Lift it off and have a look. And yep, that's a new version. Awesome. This is what I was worried about. See, this is not the version I'm used to. That's not what I was expecting. So, well, I was half expecting it. I thought there might be a new version. How to modify this? I've got absolutely no idea. May not even be possible. Because basically what I want to do is add New Zealand channels onto it. Based on the looks of this, all we've got is a microcontroller down here, which is doing all the work. Chances of us converting this thing, pretty slim. So I took the back cover off, or top cover off, and there's basically nothing on this side of the board. So everything is on this side, and there ain't much there. This is going to be tricky. I don't think this is going to be possible unless I can find where there's a frequency source which I can then interrupt and replace my own. But I doubt the um, construction is the same way. I don't think it's got the same kind of mythology behind it for how it does the frequency conversions. It might be DDS. A few moments later. So basically from what I've managed to gather from what I've been looking at it, obviously the main microcontroller down here which is controlling everything. There's Wasp Master's VCO over here with the 10.24 MHz crystal. Over here is a filter, so you can ignore that, it's not actually a crystal, it's a filter. 455 filter here as well. That's the transmit path. Receive will be in here somewhere. Well, that's probably received there. Um, obviously, they've got the VCO there. Bunch of pop unpopulated stuff in this area. And obviously, the controller there. We've got audio and probably some power supply stuff down this side. Doesn't give us many opportunities here. A whole bunch of inductors there, which will be providing power to various RF sections, usually just what they're used for filter the RF so it doesn't get back out. The only way to really do this one is to poke around and see if I can find something. What I'm hoping to find is something like a 15.360 megahertz frequency which is then mixed in but I don't think I'm going to find one and there's a good chance that VCO is just running at a full frequency so when you transmit it's running at 27 megahertz and then when you receive it's running at 27 megahertz <laughs> but with the 455 kilohertz offset because you got this. That's what I'm expecting to find. I don't know I'm going to see if I can find a circuit diagram for this for the new modern version but I doubt I'll find one. I very much doubt it. In circuit boards, we've got over here, we've got DS206. On this side, we've got something, is that PA507AB? I think it's probably a PA. That one is probably more likely to be the circuit board number because that's, if it's PA, then yes, it will be because PA's been used before for circuit board designations. So that could be the circuit board number there. Anyway, I'll go searching, see if I can find anything on it, see if I can find some tips about how to actually do this because it's not looking promising. Right, let's start diagnosing this thing. So I've looked up this chip up here, which is in the VCO section. That's a dual POL, basically, which means it's serial controlled. That means I might be able to modify it, like I've done with another radio. I was also the first in the world to do that one. We'll see. Right, let's turn this thing on. 12 volts coming in. Turn the power on. It'll light up at least, that's something. Let's put it on channel 1, so we've got a reference frequency to go from. And let's probe this thing and see what we get. Now, you want pin 6 and pin 11. I'm not quite sure which way they're actually using this thing. So pin 6 is uh, this one here. And I'm currently getting nothing on there. Let's try transmitting. Still nothing on there. Okay. 
Let's try pin 11, so it's 9, 10, 11. Now near. Right, this is doing 910 kilohertz basically on pin 11. It's got a DC offset of approximately 200 millivolts, and then I've got a 150 millivolt peak to peak. Somewhere over top of that, maybe I'll show you. They might only be using one half. So this is the LO feedback transmit that's changing. Okay, well I need to find out what things is actually using here and try and track this down. So let's go to an inductor over here. There's a couple of inductors. Here we've got 15.36 megahertz right there. Oh, that's convenient. Oh, if it's using that, that'd be brilliant. If it's using 15.36, so I can just replace that. That'd be hilarious. Because this is a POL, it's basically drawing two VCOs. So I need to figure out the circuitry for this. But one side of this over here is not populated, and this side is populated. So I'm actually wondering if only one half the chip's being used anyway, which means it might just be mixing in. But then I don't understand how it's getting the other frequencies because it's only generating half of them. Right, well, I'm going to have to dig in some more, but the fact that I can find 15.36 here on the end of L307, that's really promising. And changing channels doesn't change that. So it's using that as a reference frequency for something. That's promising. If I transmit, it stays the same. So if it's using that frequency still, which is what the old chassis used to use, I may be able to replace that frequency once I figure out where it's coming from. So I don't know, I'm not quite sure, I've got to figure out the topology of this thing. There is no information on this radio, there is nothing. There is no circuit diagrams, there's no block diagrams, there is nothing I can find. So I've got to figure this stuff out myself, which is fine. That should be TX frequency. Yes it is. It's 26.965 on that test point right there. There's a mixer over here. I've got to find out where the 15.36 is coming from. So I'll just probe around trying to understand the circuitry a little bit. So we've got a reactor diode right here. If I probe on that end of it, that is 10.24 megahertz. And changing channels, transmit receive, no difference, 10.24. There's another vector diode over here. If I probe on this end of it, D303, probe on that. And that's currently 16.27 megahertz, which is a standard frequency for these things on channel 1. And transmit, that is doing 16.725. So that is exactly what I expect to see for normal frequencies for one of these radios or a generic type of these radios. So those match up and obviously over here as I was saying I've got 15.36 on the end of this inductor here. If we go to this end of it I've got almost nothing. It's filtered. This end of it I've got 15.36. I need to find out where this source is coming from. Now we've obviously got a VCO in here controlling this bit because that's why there's a vector diode there. When you see a vector diode, very cap diode when you want to call it, that is a VCO. There's a voltage control in that diode which controls a tuned circuit. So that is the VCO. Now this side of the chip is not used. It's got two halves. This side is used for the VCO. This side is used for weather band. So this side over here which is all unpopulated is for the weather station option. Like if you've got one of these with the weather option on it. This is all used for the weather side. So that's why that's all unpopulated. That's the weather side which isn't used. So it's only using one half of the chip. So I can understand the VCO control part because that's what this PO should be doing. But where's the 15.36 coming from? There has to be a crystal somewhere. I just can't find it. It's here somewhere. So I'm just probing around, still trying to find the sources. And probing around the main microprocessor here. I'll get to this resistor here. On that side of it I'm getting 5.12 MHz. Which is a common frequency that's used as a tripler circuit to generate 15.360 normally. We've got that frequency coming out. Because over here somewhere, I think it was probing right there, that resistor there. Second one over, that has 10.24 megahertz on it. So it's got 10.24 coming in from the reference frequency up here. And then we've got 15, so we've got 5.12 megahertz coming out. So that's where the 15.36 is coming from. This is going through a tripler. Where that goes, I don't know, I've got to try and find that. But somewhere there's a tripler. It's getting easier. So now it's trying to trace this 5.12 megahertz up towards the VCO circuitry, thinking the tripler may be up here. And I've traced it to this pad right here. That's 5.12 right there. That's come all the way up to here. So they're getting close. So the tripler's in this circuit here somewhere. So I think I found the tripler. So on this side of this capacitor just here, we're getting 5.12. So obviously that, that link there runs across straight to here. The capacitor here. If I probe on this side of the capacitor, we're getting a very messy 15.36. And right here is an inductor. So you've got a capacitor, inductor, and there's another capacitor just here which is also connected to that section, that's junction. Then this side of the capacitor goes out 15.36, being a bit messy. So there's a pad just there, same deal. 
So I think that if I left this capacitor just here and jet my own signal, that might be all I need to do. Don't know what that capacitor actually is. I think that's the tripler circuit here, that's the capacitor buffering. There's the actual coil which does the tripling, and then there's the output capacitor here for the buffering as well to isolate this circuitry from the rest of it. So I think if I lift that capacitor there, that will do that job. And then somehow it comes over here, which is then filtered, I think, because that's a beautiful 15.36 over here. So I think somehow it comes across to here and gets filtered. I'm just going to try and see if I can trace where that circuitry actually is, because it would be nice to know where the filtering is actually happening. That's 15.36 there as well. So I'm not quite sure where it goes. Obviously, with multi-layer circuit balls like this, that's 15.36 here as well, but messy. So I think this is the filtering section, because right here we've got a beautiful 15.36. So I think if I lift that capacitor and inject my own signal in there, or maybe even over here, I'm not quite sure exactly, I might have to look at this and figure out where the alternatives are, then I think that will work. But I'm definitely very, very close to the section being where I wanted to inject this beautiful 15.36 right there as well and there's a lower and cleaner 15.36 there and that one there's got 1.06 megahertz on it interesting so that's doing mixing on this one so that's probably mixing and feeding back into that chip for the POR to have a reference frequency for this local oscillator reference yeah it will be that's what that'll be doing they'll be feeding back to the chip from the other frequency so it knows what it's actually doing I think I need to lift that capacitor right there what's this device here doing because this is interesting, the way it goes through the board like that. That's also got 15.36 on it. I think I'll start with that capacitor there and see what happens. Right, so I just lifted that capacitor, spun it sideways. It's now, it's still on the, one of the pads, barely. I <laughs> just sort of spun it out of the way so I don't lose it. Let's just do some tracing and see what we get as far as continuity goes. Just see what we're getting here. Now that the capacitor's out of the way, we can probably do it a bit easier. Not easier in a size circuitry, so let's go to here. So the formal pad of the capacitor, that's going straight to there, okay, and that's got, I think it's a 1k resistor, 1, 0, yeah, I think it's a 1k resistor, not in data, go straight to there, just trying to find out where else it goes to exactly. Have we got to this end? Where does that go? It goes to that resistor there. And goes to that capacitor. Then I don't know. <laughs> Okay, there's a clock there. IF clock. Okay, interesting. So that IF clock I'm measuring there is actually the output of this circuitry. Interesting. I need to inject my own signal and see what happens. Let's measure the capacitor of my OCR meter and it measured as 11 picofarads. So it's probably a 10 picofarad capacitor. So I still want modification boards in here. It's not pretty. <laughs> I think if I get to get more of these things, I'm going to have to get redesign this board and modify it to add a regulator circuit onto it. Now, this has got an 8-volt supply just over here. There is a 5-volt regulator over here, but it's tiny, just over there, like a tiny regulator down there, just for supplying the microcontroller. I didn't want to tack off that, so I've added my own 5-volt 78L05 here with a little one microfarad capacitor on the output, just to provide a 8-volt down to 5-volt regulator supply. I've tacked the board on each end, so I've got a ground point over here, also got a ground point coming off over here, going onto original ground over there, as you can see, hopefully. The output is going through a 33 picofarad capacitor through to the RF clock port. I don't know if this works yet, I haven't tried it. We're going to find out. And it's double side taped down to the board as well, so it's got two ground points, one each end to hold it, and also double side taped. This isn't going to go anywhere. Once I'm sure this works, I'll also put some kind of adhesive down as well to secure all these wires and make sure they don't move around and that kind of thing. So if this works, great. This board isn't modification like I normally use for Cobra 29s, but I didn't need to use this other circuitry on that because I had a 5 volt supply in there. You know, it wasn't really an issue, but anyway, I'm going to look at this. Let's power it up and we'll see what happens. Is it going to go bang? 
let's find out. Power on. Current all looks fine. It is transmitting. So that's looking promising. Let me get my scope probe running and see what we're getting when it comes to frequencies. And we'll see if we're getting anything different. Now in there, 15.635, that sounds right, and 16.075. On transmit, 16.090, and the transmit frequency, try and get on the RF path without dragging it down, 26.330. Looks like it worked, at least on the transmit side. Receive side should be working as well because you're measuring actual VCO frequency right here. Frequency also looks fine. So the actual levels, they look high enough. Don't look diminished at all when it is locking, so that's good. That's doing the job. So I obviously need to tune the RF section up here. I need to go and do that in the other room where I've got the test gear probably set up for that. But that works. Excellent, I've modified one of these for the first time. Is that a first? Is that a world first as well? Maybe it is. I don't know. It could be a world first. I couldn't find any references to it, so maybe I'm the first to do this as well. Yeah, wasn't it hard? Once you understand how the circuitry works. Well, that's the radio back together. It's all aligned. What little there was to do, because there is basically almost no alignments in it. There's only four adjustments, really, plus a few trimmers for things like signal meter and things like that, and squelch, and what have you. But yeah, it, it worked. Receive. It's very slightly down from where I'd like it. It's probably about 6 dB down from where I'd like it to be, but there's no adjustments, so I can't do anything about that. It's otherwise okay. I mean, it does receive right, but it's probably a bit weaker than I'd like it to be. But there's nothing I can do about it. It's just the nature of it. It's the way it is. It's done. And I think I may be the first person to do this. I don't know. Comment down below if you, if you know somebody else has modified this exact radio with this circuitry in it. Otherwise, I might be the first again. Subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed. Other videos to watch down there, other CB repair stuff and other things I do, what have you. And Patreon support link over there if you want to support the channel, help me to buy things to fix. Catch you later.